My name is Ubaidah Jamal. I'm 29 years old. I'm a landscape professional landscape photographer. So most of you now are wondering what is my job exactly, what it means to be a landscape photographer. But it's okay. My mom also don't know, doesn't know what I'm doing in my life. So let's go back 10 years uh, when, I, when I was in high school. In high school, I, I, was, I had a dream to be a teacher. Okay, don't judge me now, but in my village, I live in Jad village. Most of the people there are doctors and teachers. So one of my biggest dreams to be a teacher. So there is a saying in my, in, in my village says that if you throw a rock, it will land on a doctor or a, or a teacher. So a lot of, a lot of them doctors. So I, I finished high school. I started working a, in a, <coughs> Sorry, in a ceramic store for two years. And for the first month, I bought my first camera. It was Fujifilm. It was like a dream for me. It, it was $200 almost. And having my own camera, it was like something big because I was related to my family. Everything I, I used, it was, it was related to my family. And suddenly I have my own camera that I can use for my own stuff. So it was, it, it was something big for me. And then I was taking a lot of photos. You, you, you saw this, like the same photos on internet. It was like very, very, very usual photos, not, not unique. Uh, ducks, some sunset. This was my first ever photo that I ever took. First camera, uh, first photo in my camera. And then I, I was taking some macro shots and things like that. Then I started learning photography on YouTube, uh, watching some ser wild series, National Geographic, and a lot of things. And I was also always wondering how all these footages are, are made because it was something big, it was something unique. So. I was I was learning on YouTube how how to take some same photos and same videos uh, that I saw in National Geographic, and I was loving the photography so much. I was taking my photo everywhere, every place, in family visits, in shopping, everywhere. People are were looking at me like some strange guy who was who was going around with his camera. And I started sharing my photos on Facebook. People were loving this, and people were very impressed. So I got my first 100 follower. This was 10 years ago. So it was like, wow, I have 10 people who follow my works. So it was, it was something new for me. And then I started at Wingate College. I'm a, I'm a physical education teacher. I finished in Wingate College. And during the four years in Wingate, I had all, all, always I had this, this thoughts that this is not the place that I want to be. It's it like I don't want to be in schools for, four year, uh, for, for 50 or 60 years in my life. So I was also thinking how to, how to say to my parents that I don't want to work as a teacher because all the, the village are teachers. So I had this complicated moment that how, how to say to my, to my family that, pho that photography is gonna be my job and teacher is, and schools is not the place that I want to be in my life. So for me, it was complicated because I, I didn't know where to start, because a landscape photographer doesn't have a job. During the four years in, in Wingate, I was taking a lot of crazy shots, weird shots, like, like this. But it, it, now when I'm looking at these photos, it means a lot for me. Like, this is, this is where I start, where I started. And this is a very, very like loved photos for me, because I was building some some weird things to take photos. I had no money 
to buy like a softbox or something. So I was building my own softbox at home. This, this was my first softbox that I did. And it was like something good. I was taking a lot of photos like this, like this, sunset, everything. I was taking photos for everything. Everything was, was new for me, like this. And then I had to choose how to start my life. It, it, OK, I started photography. I need to, be, to, to, take, to have some income to live my life. So I was very complicated how to do that. So I was, I was very scared, especially when I, say, when I went to my family and say, to say to them that I don't want to work as a teacher and I want to be a, f a landscape photographer. And they were looking at me like, you're gonna be homeless, you're gonna be, <laughs> you have no work, you have nothing. So I had, I had to work on something after, after Wingate College and something that, that related to photography. So I started to work on anything but schools, just to have some, some time to prove to my family that photography can be more than a hobby. So I did my first ever uh, uh, photography course. It was for five people and they were very happy, very satisfied and they, co they recommended my photography, my course to other friends and other friends and other friends has come. So I was new, uh, people knew me as a landscape photographer, as a professional photographer in the village. So in retrospect, I, I, I believe that I was something unique that time because I, I took a lot of unique photos for every day for, for a long time. So, and I was, I think I was the first Palestinian guy who did a time-lapse video a project. It was for one year, almost, and I don't know if you don't if if you know what is time lapse is. Well, it's a series of photos every day, or every hour. Every hour or every day. It's like taking three hundred or four hundred or one thousand photos every 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 second or every two seconds or every minute, and then you're gonna have like a tons of photos that you pass very fast and there will be like a video. And I think you, you saw that in, in, on videos, on, on TV or something. And it's like, this is a very basic time lapse. Now every, every phone can do a time lapse, but it's, it's like a video and they fast it. But if, if, we, if we're going to the professional way, it's like taking photos as we said before and then going to a like a video editor or something. So I started traveling in the country more and more and take some real photos until I decided to go big and to travel to Europe, start camping in Europe. So I, I, I traveled to Europe for the first time and it was a long period of time. And then I went to the Arctic. It was very unique, a place full of nature full of unique places. I hiked a lot. I stayed in a unique places. I visit a lot of places that there is no people there. Like you will have just a small village here and small village there. It was very unique and I never dreamed to see the Northern Lights. The Northern Lights was like something unique. You just look at the sky and you see those little or those green lights dancing in the sky. Something that I can describe to you, you, sh you should see in your naked eye. There's another shot for the uh, northern lights. I never dreamed to be in Iceland in summer and it's like I was there for one week with no nights, just day. There is, was no night. I, I lived in my uh, jeep in KS Portage. It was 
just the just day when I went to sleep, I was closing the whole windows on the car because it's 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 a day, it's not night. And then this photo, for example, it was like 3 a.m. midnight. It's called Midnight Sun, this phenomena. And it's very unique. I never dreamed to be in a place like this when I started photography. This video was at 3 or 4 a.m. when I was heading home at airport. So look at the sky, it's sunset. So the sunset was going for six or seven hours. It's like the, the sun goes down until the horizon and it starts going up again. And I never dreamed to have a second place in a photography contest on National Geographic. So this was a story, a, a National Geographic Your Shot story, and it published in National Geographic website. I never dreamed to be in a place like this when I started photography. This shot was taken in Tel Aviv, I think eight years ago, and I submit this photo five or four years ago, and it got published. So I, I started traveling a lot and a lot and a lot in Europe. I had a lot of support from my family, my parents, my three sisters who gave me a, a, a lot of inspire and motivate and they motivated me. And then I met a guy who called Anas, building his own photography school. So he invited me to be a teacher in his school and I started teaching there for one or two years and then I became the manager of Comra. This is the name of the school. And now Comra is the, the steady income for me. It was and still my, 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 my steady income. So I started doing workshops around the world, in Europe, in, the nor in North Norway, and a lot of, a lot of other places. Photographers around the world are coming to my workshops to, do, to make their dreams come true, to see the Northern Lights, and to capture it, to see the Milky Way. This shot was taken in Israel, in, in the desert. So uh, it's something unique. People were coming to see some unique places like this. Imagine that you are standing here above the clouds. So it's, it's something that you can't imagine in your head. You are coming to visit a lot of places, uh, unique places. And all I remember now is my mom helping me taking photos like this at home when I start photography. She was throwing a lemon inside a cup just to make this unique shots. So when I started photography, I was taking a lot of photos at home, not outside. I was, I hadn't, the affor I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't afford that I can travel outside the country. So I was taking a lot of photos inside the country and even at home. So I had, I, all, I, all I remember now, those tough moments that I had to decide between a, a, a very adventurous life or a normal life as a teacher. So people now on Instagram supporting me a lot. Like all I do now is, is a, a lot of support from my followers on, on Instagram. Imagine that I had 100 likers or followers at first and I was very happy. Now I got a lot of support here and people here are are pushing me to do another trip and another trip and another trip. But sometimes you get some troubles. I lost my camera in my first day at Iceland and it was my first trip there ever. Like in the first day and in the first trip to Iceland, it was something that I can't describe. I lost it, 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 it was like $5,000, more than $5,000. It was night, northern lights in front of me. I was looking at the camera, at the northern lights, and the camera is, is like near a, a cliff. And then suddenly I'm looking and the camera fall out from the mountain. It was something that I can't describe. I went to the car, I started crying like babies, Really, it was, it was something that 
I lost everything. For me, camera was everything, and I went to Iceland for the first time to take photos for the Northern Lights. And suddenly, I'm just looking at the Northern Lights without a camera. So it's, it's very bad. I had to sleep, just camping, bathing in the lakes for 10 days without food, without anything, because sometimes I went to a very high places like mountains, and I had no no more food, like no more, uh, everything finished. So I, it, was, it was something that people can't sometimes handle it. So, but everything that I describe now is, is obstacles, but it, it's, it can be forgettable once you, you, can see, once you see the, the results. So I, um, I'm gonna show you a, a video that I made. It took me two and a half years to make it. It was a, a, a time-lapse video project, and in 4K. After this video, a big company cont contacted me from Canada, and they bought the whole video. And then companies around the world started to take some videos and sponsored a travel for me to travel more and more and take photos and videos. So here come our four minutes of a lens of a time lapse video.
So this project was like two and a half years of, of tough working. And all I can say before I finish, it's always hard work pays off. Like when I started photography, I didn't know what I'm doing in my life, really. And now when I see at my, like my goals, achievement after achievement after achievement, I, all I, if I want to say something before I finish, it, it's going to be like a success is not a big step and one, one step you, you take it once. It's like a step after step after step. And between each step, you're going to, you're going to reward it with achievement, a small achievements that leads you to a bigger achievement. That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Questions? Um, first of all, uh, nice work. Um, photography is becoming more and more uh, um, widespread. Famous. Like a lot of people yeah. are, are picking up cameras and doing amazing stuff. And I wanted to ask, like, first of all, what do you do to put yourself out there and make yourself more visible? Like, to more followers because there's a lot of good uh, photographers, but marketing is probably part of the uh, of yeah. the deal of getting people to see your work. Especially uh, around the world, like I don't know in Israel. In Israel, it's like every photographer knows who who's the photographers here. Like I think I know most of the famous photographers here in Israel. Like we all knows each other, but outside the country, it's like something that y you you must fight to be to be like a. Sh to to sh to put your name on the on the on, on the lead like i i remember i was following a guy called daniel corden i don't know if you know him yeah, yeah. so uh for me he he was like a dream and i was in norway northern norway one day and i at night taking photos for the northern lights and suddenly i heard his voice so I, I, I didn't saw, see him. I just hear, hear his vo voice. And then I, I went to, to his place and I talked to him. And we started to be like a friends. And he started to give me some like a, a tips to be more and more and more famous on Instagram and all social media. So uh, you you have to be unique like you have to to show your work it's not like going on instagram and ask people to follow you without having a portfolio like you have you should have a very unique portfolio to to imp to improve to people that you ha you are something different so uh, this is why this is why i started traveling around the world like in israel i had some great photos but in some in some places you you can't be more creative in in a landscape photography in something else there is a lot of things to do here but in a landscape photography you have to travel around the world just to take some unique play, uh, unique shots so for example in the in the in the south here in israel i took a lot of milky way shots and it was very unique but except, except uh, more than that, I had to travel around the world. How come you didn't start out doing what a lot of photographers do, which is taking photos of weddings and events and things like that to, to pay your bills and, and doing other photography on the side? Were you ever pushed or did you ever f feel the need to do that? I did that once. It was a wedding, and it was this, a friend forced, forced me to, to go to a wedding and take photos. It was a very bad idea, <laughs> really. Uh, I hate that. I hate taking photos for people. Like uh, this, this is not me. Like I was, I was uh, very, uh, very related to a landscape and nature. Till now, I when I travel in nature, I I'm something. I'm something else. Like I just be in nature and looking and I can be for for example the, the photo that you saw on Iceland when I was standing in front of a, the mountain I I I was there for 8 or 10 hours in the same place people were asking me what what what, what are you doing there 
I was just looking at the beautiful place and just like just looking so uh, it's it's I don't know it's I can't describe it thank you all for being here uh, it's a pleasure uh, and nice to meet you all